the trial was done, um, a keynote 555. It was an analysis um, in uh, metastatic melanoma. And um, the, the idea behind the trial was to check bioavailability of uh, subcutaneous administration of pembrolizumab. Now, the background to this is that um, we know that pembrolizumab is a potent uh, humanized monoclonal antibody against the PD-1 receptor, and it's approved in, a cup, in multiple um, tumor lines, um, including melanoma. We know that um, um, pembrolizumab, up to this point in time, has been given um, intravenously, and uh, the dose that we have been using and that's been registered has been 200 milligrams every three weeks. Uh, there's also other pharma pharmacokinetic um, uh, done in the keynote um, cohort B of keynote 555, where it was e evaluated to, uh, to see that um, our dose of 400 milligrams could, could be given every six weeks. And I think recently, Bajali can help me there, um, it's been approved by FDA to give it that dose. So the Q6 week, so... No, Kino 55 had two cohorts. Um, the one we're presenting today is cohort A, but we also had cohort B that was uh, 400 milligrams Q6 weeks, and we've had you know approval in the FDA in Japan, in the EU, in China, in multiple markets uh, based on yeah. the the results of that uh, that that trial, which you know Dr. Jacobs was uh, you know also you know, you know one of the significant players, uh, principal investigators in that portion of the study. That was the keynote um, 555 cohort B. So the 400 milligrams is the alternate dose. Um, and um, we know um, that there are other uh, monoclonal antibodies that are given subcutaneously and um, have been uh, working quite well. And we, we're looking at receptin as one of them. And I think the idea behind the trial was to see if, if um, the bioavailability of Pembrolizumab given subcutaneously uh, would be acceptable. Um, there are various reasons for it. It's easier to administer. It can be administered off-site. Um, you don't it reduces the time for preparation, and um, uh, it is just more convenient to the patient. So um, it's an open label phase one study. Uh, and the cohorts uh, was to cohort A was to evaluate the bioavailability of um, uh, the administration of pembrolizumab. But I'm going to just um, highlight the objectives of the trial was um, to characterize um, the PK profile of the subcutaneous pembrolizumab, particularly the absorption phase. Um, to estimate the relative bioavailability of subcutaneous pembrolizumab in the two different formulations that was given. The one was 130 milligram per milliliter and the other 165 milligram per milliliter. Uh, so there were two, two uh, volumes of, of administration. Um, and then the secondary objectives <clears throat> were to evaluate the development and circulating anti pembrolizumab antibodies after subcutaneous administration of the pembrolizumab. Um, and also to evaluate the safety and tolerability, including site reaction, um, and obviously any other reaction and safety that, um, that happens with it. There were 36 patients um, in the trial, six in each, each arm. Um, the medium age group of the patients were 60, mostly male, uh, all of them were uh, ca Caucasian or white. 10 patients were done in Australia and 26 patients in South Africa, mostly ECOG zero, uh, good performance status mostly, and um, all clinical staging uh, were uh, stage four except for one patient. Um, so mostly, so 30, 35 patients were, were stage four. No prior therapy in 30 of the patients and prior adjuvant therapy in five. And if we look at the outcome of this uh, and we analyze that, the, the PK values and things were um, 
very well documented on the on our um, poster. Um, just to mention that um, the pembrolizumab serum data was collected and the absorption phase of the subcutation was characterized by a first order absorption and the bioavailability bio availability parameters. Distribution and elimination phase were described by a two compartment model. The inclusion of a covert if Covariate effects for the strength of the subcutaneous formulation or use of distinct absorption models for each subcutation were not statistically significant, indicating no meaningful difference in the bio bioavailability of the two um, formulations that were used. The estimated bioavailability of the absorption was 66%, with a conference interval of 58 to 74%. And um, very few adverse events were documented of none greater than one uh, stage one or two. And most of the symptoms uh, that were documented or measured was uh, pain, itching, swelling, or erythema. And um, we only found that there was erythema in two or three patients um, evaluated. As far as the conclusion is concerned then is that the analysis showed that subcutaneous administration of Pembro had an estimated bioavailability of 66%, which is consistent with the bioavailability reported for other monoclonal anti antibodies administered subcutaneously. The two tested subcutaneous formulation strengths um, had similar absorption PKs the subcutaneous administration was well tolerated with no adverse events. So the subcutaneous dose can achieve the same effect as the 200 milligrams intravenously given every three weeks. And um, that is um, the trial.